All right, we have our orange sparks flying out, and they're looking great. Uh, the next thing we want to do is take care of the bright blue flicker that exists right at the point of the arc. Now, we're actually going to do this out of, with two separate particle systems, but I don't expect you to know that if you're doing this kind of thing from scratch. A lot of what we're doing is, I mean, really, I don't have notes. I did not sit down and uh, and really take the time to draft out exactly what settings to use. Well, even the first time you did it, you didn't know you were going to have two particle systems. You started right. with one and go, you know what, I think I need a second one. Yep, I wanted something to add a little bit more uh, flair and flicker to it. And so I added a second particle system. And that's what I'm going to be doing here. I just want to reiterate, though, that as you're doing this kind of stuff on your own, there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot of tweaking values just to see what looks right and maybe not knowing going in or usually having no idea going in what your settings and, and everything are going to be. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at adding in our little blue uh, sparkle aspect. Now, to make this happen, what I need is another particle system right here at the origin of where these particles are being spawned. Which is cool, it's just that I don't want to have to try to move something to that exact position because I'm lazy. So I'm just going to select the Sparks particle system and hit Control D and duplicate that. We will take the duplicate and name this Arc Welding Flare 1. And again, because I already know I'm going to need 2, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, serialize the number. Now, make sure that you know whether or not your inspector is locked. Because if you already had your orange spark selected and it was locked, any changes that you're about to make to your arc welding flare will actually be affecting your original spark, and you don't want that to happen. That has bitten me so many times, and very well may bite me before these videos are over. Just so you know. So if it happens, you're welcome to point at your screen and laugh. Now, obviously, we have some changes to make here because this doesn't look like, well, anything close to a little blue flare. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my World Particle Collider. So we'll just remove that component out altogether. And so now we're no longer bouncing. I'd also like to change out the material, but I'm going to save that until a time when it's a little more apparent as to why we need it. So again, it just comes back to the workflow of what's the first problem. The first one is that we don't need these to ever collide. This will just be a little puff of super bright blue at the origin of the system. It doesn't need to collide with anything. So now we need to fix the problem of the motion. It doesn't need to be moving like this. I'll start by taking the local velocity and setting it to zero. We can take random velocity, and in the end, we'll probably have some velocity. But for now, I'm going to set all of these to zeros down the board. And now you see the particles are falling because we had that force. So let's go ahead and take the force and set that to zero as well. And the particles seem to kind of disappear. The reason they're disappearing, if that kind of freaks you out, is because we're currently using stretched particles that are queuing off of velocity. We have no velocity. So we're going to take stretch and set it back to billboard. And now we get this little puff of particles right here. And we can see kind of how that looks. Now, what's our next problem? Well, this can be this is where things start to get a little bit on the subtle side. The arc that I'm going to be creating is really just going to look like a brilliant mass, kind of globular, at least this first one. And then we'll add some points, almost like a lens flare effect a little bit later. But right now, my first problem is that these particles are far too small for what I have in mind. So let's grab our arc welding flare. I'm going to lock the inspector and go back up to the arc welding particle system, kind of master group. That just gets all the polygons out of my way. Let's take our min and max size, and let's set this to, I don't know, let's try 0.2 and 0.3. And that's a little heavy for now. It's a little hard to say, but uh, let's try 0.1 and 0.2. 0.1 is number lock off. No, it doesn't have anything selected. There we go. Turn emit back on. So 0.1 and 0.2, and give the others a little bit of time to die out. That might work. But we need a little bit of motion. And the reason we need motion is not really because I want this flare to look like it's actually going anywhere, but I do want it to look like it's pulsating, like it's flickering and undulating, like it's, it's, like it's changing its shape. And we can fake that by using a combination of motion and change in energy. So let's start with motion. I'm going to take random velocity and set it to, uh, let's just try two in all axes and just see how that looks. Two by two by two. 
And now we have particles literally flying out yeah. everywhere. You get two by two by twenty. Well, you know that's a you got to try everything, right? So and then I typed it again. So there's two. I just want to keep hitting that zero key like a lot. So obviously this is not particularly useful, but if we take this and combine it with a really low energy, which again, energy, lifespan, same thing. Let's try point 0.1 and point 0.2. And they're still living just a little bit too long. So let's try point 0.05 and point 0.1. And that's getting there. But now we can start playing with that size a little more. So let's try point 0.5 and 1. And it's just a little much. I mean, it's starting to get there. It does look like something that is kind of sit there, you know, flickering and jumping around a little, but it's just a little much. And what I'm going to do for starters is just slow it down. So let's go with one by one by one. And then we'll try 0.1 and 0.15 on our energy. And that's starting to give a nice kind of flickering look. But our next problem is that it still kind of looks elongated vertically, and that is because of that spark material. It's ju that's just the texture that, that it's created with. So we need to drop a new material on here. Now in this case, I do have a material in mind that I'm gonna end up editing. So here's what I will do. Let's start off by jumping into our element zero, and we'll click on our little select button. I'm going to start with fairy dust, which is kind of like your generic particle, really. It's just like a, a little rounded fall-off texture. So we'll select that for starters. And we may need to make some more changes to this once we get this a little bit finalized, but that's okay. We'll get to that. But I, uh, the key here is I don't want to make any changes to the actual fairy dust material. So I'm going to go under Standard Assets, Underneath Particles. Remember, this is... One of the default packages that I have loaded in, if you don't see standard assets particles, it's because you just haven't loaded that package in. Hopefully you know that by now. Now underneath sources, you'll see materials, and underneath materials, you'll see fairy dust. We can take this and duplicate it, because we like that as a base, but we don't want to change the base in case we ever go back for it to, to any reason whatsoever, or back to it for any reason. You know what I meant. Uh, now let's change this to welding arc 1 scroll down and there it is and we'll just take it and drag it right into our material slot like so now that doesn't cause any changes because again it's the same thing it's just a duplicate but now we can change this to our hearts content without affecting that original fairy dust so I'm gonna do a couple of things before I start playing so I'm gonna bring my min and max size back down I think I just went up, got a little overzealous with those let's do 0.3 to 0.5 that's cool but it's still getting a little bit too much separation so let me try pulling down my random velocity to point sixes across the board. That's not bad. It still kind of looks like a single shape that's doing a lot of flickering and jostling and jumping around. So we'll go with that. Now, I want this to be blue, flat out. When you, um, not that I ever recommend you look at these, but you've probably seen them on like movies and TV shows and things. Uh, but they do have a bluish tinge to them. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab our tint color underneath uh, our shader and let's set this to a shade of blue. Now check this out. If you drag this to super fully saturated blue, things start to look really silly. If you want to get that super bright white core, remember you've got to have a little bit of desaturation in your overall particle effect. We can also change the alpha and get that to look a whole lot brighter. You'll notice if it's really low, it's just kind of a faint puff but we can really crank it up and find just the right combination of brightness like so so there we go now that's looking pretty good but it's not perfect I don't like the overly globular look of it I'd like it to be broken up with some points almost like lens flares I know lens flares but um, oh, everything has to have lens flares. Everything needs a lens flare. But we're not really going to use lens flares. We are going to fake it uh, using well a couple of things. But first off, there's a, there are some things about this I do need to change. So before I get completely away from this, uh, let me take a look at our emission factor. Because if I pull this down to 100, we're starting to get a really kind of faint effect. But I don't think my emission rate needs to be cranked up to 200. So what I'd like to do is make some tweaks to this 
so that I can get away with a much lower emission value than what I had. Uh, something underneath 100 would be ideal. You might want to add some to the min as well. Yeah. So if we set this to like a, a flat 80 on both. Now, I think what I would need to do is maybe start slowing some things down. And I did it again, didn't I? Maybe play around with the uh, fade in, fade out transparencies. Well, that's going to be a big kicker, too, because right now we, we've, we're we kind of fading at 75% over our color animations. So we, we go from, like, almost nothing straight up to 75%. If I crank this alpha inside color animation 1 and color animation 3 all the way to 100%, and we could probably get away with 0 and 4 being kicked up as well because if we start seeing things kind of flicker in and out of existence, it's not going to make that much of a difference because everything's pretty much stacked right on top. Now another way to handle that would just be to switch off animate color entirely because we're, we're just kind of leaving everything at full bright, full white. And you got to think, if you're doing that, do you really, really need to have it animate at all? So the answer in this case is going to be no. Now let's see, a couple of other tweaks and changes. What if uh, I just want to take my blue and just see what happens if I adjust the saturation just a bit. That's starting to come together just a little better. And let me take my emission and kick it up to 100 flat. I'm going to take my min and max size and play with this as well. So let's see if we do 0.1 to 0.05. It's a little bit too much breaking going on in there. It does look kind of cool, though. I'm going to leave it like this for now, because I know I'm going to add a second particle system to add the flares, and then we can always jump back and forth and get the, the appropriate tweaks in. So that's good for starters here. Now let's create our second uh, arc welding flare. So what I'm going to do is just hit Control D with arc welding flare 1 selected in the hierarchy, and then I'll name this arc welding flare 2. And you can see that brightened everything up quite a bit. I'm also going to take my material as it exists and hit Control D, and we automatically get arc welding 2. Now let's apply the material first thing before we do any lock changing. Lock unlock. Lock unlock. Really good. Thank you, because I would have totally missed that, and I'd have been changing the wrong one. Or actually unlock and then lock. But yeah, but make sure you do unlock the view. And really, I like to make sure that I select something else and see the inspector update just to make sure everything is nice and on the level. And then we can lock that back. Good catch. I, I really totally missed that. Now let's grab Arc Welding 2 and drag it right back on top of Arc Welding 1. Now let's make some changes to Arc Welding 2. The first thing I want to change is the, the texture that's being applied to the material. I'm going to scroll down and grab Star 2. And you can already see what that's doing. It's just adding a little bit of like flicker and I'd say it's kind of like a lens flare effect. If I jump back up to our Arc Welding Particle system you see what that's doing. And we can change the size of it to make those look a little bit more dominant. So let's maybe go with 0.3 to 0.5. And then I just want to try a few things here. Let's try setting our min energy to 0 0.075. So these could potentially live for a lot less uh, by 0.1. Maybe try the min and max size to 0.5. And one might be a little high. It depends on how you want that effect to look. I mean, that actually looks pretty good from a distance. But it's got a nice kind of jump and flicker to it. You may be tempted to do some rotation to it. I wouldn't because I think you get kind of like a cartoony star-like effect. And since what we're going for is a little closer to a lens flare, I think just leaving it always oriented the same way looks kind of nice. So I think that's going to work for us. I think with that we've got a nice little core that's showing up as primarily white, like it's too bright to look at, but it's getting a little blue around the edges. It's got a nice flicker to it, a couple of different particle systems to get kind of a, a softish core, and then the, the points kind of like a lens flare at the edges. So that will work for that aspect of our particle system. In the next video, we'll take a look at adding some smoke. Thanks for watching.